Hey, this is Spencer Wright. I'm here to talk a little bit about metal 3D printing and DMLS and EBM parts. Now, both of these parts are printed from titanium on machines that cost about a million dollars. Uh, but this guy uses a, a high power laser to fuse the individual particles of titanium in the print bed, whereas this one uses an electron beam. Um, these two processes are very similar in a lot of different ways, but the differences between a laser and electron beam produce interesting differences in the parts uh, finished characteristics, including the surface finish um, and the support structures you're going to need to remove and then clean up after the part is printed. Um, so I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about those and a little bit about how they impact your design process as you're beginning to think about these two technologies. Uh, without any further ado, let's get at it. All right, let's look at some parts. Um, so there are obviously two designs here. The one on the left is made by EBM. The one on the right is made by DMLS. Um, in some cases, that will mean that I'm comparing apples to oranges, but I figured it'd be a little bit easier to follow along with that way. Um, so these guys were made on RCAM A2X by Adero Manufacturing in Connecticut. Um, RCAM is kind of the only game in town when it comes to EBM, uh, which, by the way, means uh, electron beam melting. Um, and both of these parts are TIE 6 4. Um, these guys are made in an EOS M280 by DRT Medical Morris in Cincinnati. Um, EOS is uh, one of many companies that make uh, laser metal powder bed fusion machines. Um, technically, DMLS is a name that EOS owns. Uh, and there are a bunch of other names that the other manufacturers use, but I use DMLS generically like many people in the industry do because it's just way easier to, to say. Um, so, uh, yeah, the first thing to look at is the surface finish of these parts. Um, now, in general, um, the surface finishes of both of these are going to fall kind of between 200 and 500 micro inches. Um, obviously, this is a very crude way of measuring surface finish, um, but it kind of gives you an idea of what of what you are looking at here. Um, however, you know, with the EBM parts, um, you know, not only do you have the stepping um, in the areas where the surface is very close to being tangent to the build orientation, um, but you also have a significant amount of roughness. Um, on those vertical faces as well, um, which in some cases might cause uh, stress risers um, if the part is, is loaded mechanically um, in those areas. Um, so whereas with the DMLS parts, you know, yeah, you do definitely get that stepped um, appearance um, in, these, in this area here where um, that cylinder is very close to being tangent to the, the build orientation. But... On those vertical faces, you know, that's not a smooth surface by any means, but it is consistent at least. Um, now, when, this, when both these parts are cleaned up, um, you know, whether you do um, abrasive blasting or uh, chemical milling or micro-machining or so on and so forth, um, all these surfaces will get considerably smoother. Um, but uh, you're going to see the layer boundaries a lot more um, on this part, on those vertical surfaces. Um, so uh, I am getting these parts uh, finished by a couple different methods over the next uh, month or so, and I'll post an update to show what the surface finish looks like then. Um, the next thing to look at is those support structures. So I uh, should note that both of these parts' um, support structures were generated in materialized magics. And so the patterns that you see are just typical of magics itself um, and don't necessarily represent what are possible given these two manufacturing technologies. Um, but in general, um, they do kind of give you an idea of what, you'll, what you should expect when you buy parts from a job shop. Um, so the DMLS part, these big block structures, um, and th this, is, this is a big the block support that kind of supports this whole bottom face of the cylinder here, um, they're, they're a pretty fine grid, right? So you have, uh, you have walls everywhere here. Now, supports typically are only centered every other layer in this orientation. 
Um, but this still ends up being a, a pretty significant chunk of metal that can be really difficult to remove um, in some cases. Um, you can imagine also this guy here. In order to remove this, so you, you'll notice that this is perforated in a couple of locations. And a lot of, a lot of cases, um, uh, magics will generate supports that are perforated um, in kind of blocks. Actually, I'll show you over here. So this guy here, you can see that this block support has been perforated to make that easier to remove. Um, uh, but, you know, removing this big block where it's between two walls that are structural and you can't, you know, you, there's not really an easy way to get in there, you're probably going to end up with, you know, a screwdriver or a pick, you know, um, poking in there and then wedging around and, and so on and so forth. And it could be kind of a mess. Um, with the EBM parts, you'll notice this is kind of a, a bigger lattice structure. Um, and you have this, this rib that goes that way with a kind of a couple of different uh, bracings to hold up uh, this face up here. Um, you also have a couple of uh, point load supports, which are um, basically trivial to take off. So this just goes like that and comes right off. Um, the, the big uh, support here is going to be a little bit more difficult, but still, you know, you're just kind of going to grab it and then this is actually how how you would do this on a, in, a, um, in a part. You just grab it with your hand and kind of just pull. It takes a little bit of work, but it's it's relatively easy to get off. Um, I will note, however, that you know because there aren't very many points of contact along this top edge, and the individual points of contact tend to be a little bit larger. And so you'll see on this surface here, it has kind of these warts, these areas where you have some semi-sintered powder um, that's kind of hanging on. Um, and this, the surface is pretty coarse. Um, so you need to, you know, take a file for that, or really the surface is probably going to be machined in the end. Um, so, uh, so take note of that. On the other hand, if we look at this guy, so let's, let's grab this and just take a pair of pliers and we just grab one of these blocks kind of and There you go. So they kind of come out in chunks. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to get the ones in there and possibly, you know, I'll use a screwdriver and kind of wedge my way in there. Um, and uh, actually, let's look at another one too. It's, let's look at this guy. So here I have this support that runs between these two faces. And uh, this, I think what I'm going to do is take the same screwdriver and just go in there and pop it. There you go. And so you see there is some slag left there. That'll be relatively easy to clean up because those, uh, those walls are so thin. Um, let's look a little bit at this surface where I, where I removed the supports here, though. Like I said, on the EBM parts, they tend to kind of leave these big warts. Here, you know, this is a, this is a rough surface for sure. Um, but again, it's a little bit more consistent. Um, uh, you know, you have this, this coarseness, um, but you don't have those big witnesses where, you know, a single piece of powder or a little clump of uh, semi-centered material has, has attached itself there. Um, so that's about it for this little demo. Um, I will post an update when I get these parts back from finishing. Um, hope this has been helpful, and uh, uh, yeah, stay tuned.